Hello, my name is Alex Holmes and I'm the Macmillan Cancer Information and Support Manager here at Barking, Havering and Redbridge University NHS Trust. This film was made prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, so you will now see staff wearing protect personal protective equipment and masks and social distancing rules apply. We would also ask that when you enter the hospital, you put a mask on too. This is for everybody's safety. Thank you. My name is Sarah. Hello, my name is Mairead and we have both been cancer patients here at Queen's Hospital in Romford. As part of the planned treatment for your cancer, your oncologist or haematologist may have prescribed a course of chemotherapy for you. Both Mairead and I received chemotherapy as part of our treatment. We hope this film may be able to take away some of the anxiety and answer some of the questions that you may have about your chemotherapy treatment. Chemotherapy is the name used to describe anti-cancer drugs which destroy cancer cells. Chemotherapy drugs disrupt the way cancer cells grow and divide, causing damage to the cancer cells which will eventually die. Sometimes chemotherapy is used on its own, but often it's used with other treatments such as radiotherapy, surgery, hormonal therapy or some other anti-cancer drugs. Not all cancers are treated with the same chemotherapy drugs or in the same way. There are many different chemotherapy drugs and new drugs are being developed all the time. You may be given a single drug or a combination of drugs. It really is about what is going to be best for you. Deciding that best treatment takes place at a weekly meeting of doctors and other health professionals where you and your symptoms will be discussed. You may hear this being referred to as a multidisciplinary team meeting. If you are eligible for current clinical trials running at our hospitals, you will be approached by either your consultant or a member of the research team who will go through with you the benefits and drawbacks to joining the trial. You will be given written information to take home to read and to help your discussions with family and friends. The research team will be there to guide you through the process to ensure you are able to make an informed decision on whether entering a clinical trial is the right choice for you. If you do decide to enter a trial, the research team will play a key role ensuring you are safe and well supported throughout the research study. Chemotherapy can be given as tablets by mouth, intravenously into the vein, or in some cases, such as leukemia or some types of lymphoma, into the spine. Chemotherapy can also be given via an injection. Your doctor will discuss with you what is the best method for your chemotherapy to be given. Most chemotherapy is given to you as an outpatient in our sunflower suite at Queen's Hospital. Chemotherapy via injection is also given here. However, if you are taking chemotherapy tablets only, these are prescribed for you in our haematology or oncology outpatient department. You collect them from our hospital pharmacy and take them at home. For some cancers, like leukaemia, you will need to come into hospital and be an inpatient whilst your chemotherapy is given over a few days. Sometimes chemotherapy is given in conjunction with radiotherapy and this is called chemoradiation. Dependent on the type of chemotherapy, it may be given before or after. The chemotherapy for this can either be given as tablet or intravenously. Each course of intravenous chemotherapy is prepared on the day of your treatment in our pharmacy manufacturing department using strict procedures. 
It is then transported by our porters to the Sunflower Suite. When you have your first consultation with your specialist doctor, they will discuss the proposed treatment plan, explaining about the chemotherapy and the benefits of having it. Sarah Turl. Hi Sarah. At this time, most appointments will be via telephone. You may not see your doctor face to face. The doctor will talk you through all the possible side effects of the drugs and then ask you to sign a consent form. This consent form is then kept in your hospital notes. They will also advise on how they can help with any side effects. If there is anything you have not understood, please don't worry, just ask for it to be explained again. You will also need to have a blood test if you have not had one recently. Once your chemotherapy has been booked, you will receive a call from our booking team informing you of the day and time of your first chemotherapy appointment, plus an appointment for a chemotherapy pre-assessment. Before every cycle of chemotherapy, you will have to have a consultation with either a doctor or a chemotherapy nurse. At this time, this appointment will be via telephone. During the consultation, you will be weighed. This is to check how you have been since your last cycle of chemotherapy and to check you are fit for the next one. Your blood test and any scans will be reviewed and chemotherapy prescribed. You cannot proceed to your next cycle of chemo without this consultation. This is a really important time to raise any side effects or concerns. We would always suggest writing these down in advance, just in case you forget. As chemotherapy affects normal blood cells, you will have to have a blood test taken before every chemotherapy cycle to check that the blood levels are within a safe range for you to be able to have chemotherapy. These blood tests can be done in the phlebotomy area located in the oncology outpatient department Monday to Friday. You will need to book a blood test either by phone or online. Please check the Trust website. As a chemotherapy patient, you are more than welcome to use our oncology car park for free. You just need to collect a token from Sunflower Reception when you leave to allow free exit. Our film was filmed prior to the COVID pandemic. Therefore, staff now wear masks and personal protective equipment with social distancing rules applying within the unit and waiting room. Sadly, no visitors are allowed within the unit at this time. On arrival, please report to the reception desk in the Sunflower Suite to let the team know you have arrived. You will then be asked to have a seat in the waiting room. Although the team will aim to see you within 30 minutes of your appointment time, there can be delays which are out of the team's control. The staff will aim to keep you informed. If you think you have waited a long time or have any concerns at all, please pop back into the treatment area and ask one of the receptionists who will find a nurse from the team allocated to you to update you. Please don't sit in silence thinking you don't want to bother staff. If you are concerned, please do speak up. Staff understand that this is an anxious time for you and will always want to help. Sarah Tell, please. Hello, Sarah. My name's Shannon. I'll be looking after you today. When your chemotherapy has been delivered to the Sunflower Suite and there is a chair available, the nurse will call you in and get you comfortable in one of the chairs. Whilst lovely to be accompanied by a relative or friend, it's not possible to bring them at this time. A good book, crossword puzzles and a light blanket if we just wanted to snuggle down and close our eyes helped us. We have a team of lovely, friendly volunteers who will keep you supplied with tea and coffee. But sometimes it is nice to bring in your own snacks and certainly a packed lunch if you are going to be with us for a while, which you normally are.
Having a friend or relative to chat to, crossword puzzles to do, and a light blanket to put over me if I got a bit chilly or just wanted to snuggle down and close my eyes helped me. Every time you have chemotherapy, the nurses will ask you your name and date of birth and then will check this against your hospital notes and chemotherapy prescription. You will be asked to wear a name bracelet. You may be asked a number of times to confirm your name and date of birth. This is not to annoy you or because staff don't recognise you, but for your safety. Everything should stop for ID and be given your fullest attention. This is extremely important in ensuring you get your correct treatment. To be able to have intravenous chemotherapy, the nurse will have to gain access to a vein. This is called cannulation. The nurse will insert a cannula into your arm or back of your hand. A saline drip, which is salty water, will be attached to check that the cannula is in position in the vein and that the saline flows well. Two nurses will then check the chemotherapy drugs against your prescription and ask you to check them too. Again, we ask for your fullest attention on this key check. The chemotherapy will then be given via the drip using an infusion pump. The time this will take will depend upon which drugs you have. Some are given via a syringe and some as an infusion via a bag of fluid. If at any time you feel any pain or notice any redness, swelling or strange sensation near the cannula or further up the arm, then please let the nurse know straight away. Occasionally, the chemotherapy can leak into the tissue around the cannula if it has been dislodged and this will need immediate treatment. This is called extravasation. Also, if you feel any strange sensations, flushing or tightness of chest, please let a nurse know straight away. Occasionally, patients can have an allergic reaction to certain drugs. This can be unpleasant, but the nurses are specially trained to treat this immediately. I had an allergic reaction to one of my chemotherapy drugs. It was obvious within a matter of a few short minutes that something wasn't right. I felt a tightening in my chest. Whilst being a really frightening experience, the immediate response of the caring staff who calmly and reassuringly took control of the situation helped me immensely. If something doesn't feel right, call your nurse immediately. Once the drugs have been safely given and the cannula flushed with saline, the cannula will be removed and a plaster will be applied. The nurse will then check that you have all the correct medication, tablets to take home, that you have been given your next appointment with the doctor and also the sunflower suite and a blood test request form. You will then be free to go home. Some patients will have a permanent venous access inserted, which means that permanent access to the vein is available. This is either a PIC line or a Hickman line. These are inserted in X-ray and can stay in place for six months or more. If you require one of these, the nurse or doctor will explain more about them and how they are looked after. If you've been prescribed chemotherapy tablets, you will still need a blood test and consultation and attend a pre-assessment appointment. You will not need to go into the sunflower suite. Instead, you'll be given an appointment with a nurse. It will be explained to you how you take your tablets at home and any safety precautions you will need to take. Like any medication you may take, chemotherapy drugs can and do have side effects. The doctors and nurses will go through the possible side effects with you, but we thought it would be helpful to mention some of the more common ones and ways you might be able to help yourself. Please remember that whilst these are possible, you may not experience them.
One of the most common side effects is the lowering of your immune system. This is when your white blood cells are lowered, which happens about a week after your chemotherapy and takes about a week to recover. This is the time when you are most vulnerable to infection. We would highly recommend that you have a reliable thermometer at home and if you feel unwell, hot and sweaty or cold and clammy, to take your temperature. Also, if you have any signs of infection, such as sore throat, pain when passing urine, or upset stomach. If your temperature is above 38 Celsius or below 35 Celsius, you need to give the hospital a ring immediately on the 24-hour emergency hotline number. You will have been given an emergency 24-hour hotline card and chemotherapy passport. Keep them handy. Ring the number on the card and a trained nurse will advise you on the next steps to take. This phone number is manned 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Please phone even if it is 3 a.m. on a Sunday morning. We need to hear from you. The temperature or signs of infection may possibly be something that is called neutropenia, or neutropenic sepsis. You will probably be advised to come straight up to the hospital to have a blood test and be started on antibiotics straight away. There is no need to become a hermit and hide away during this time, but we would advise that you stay away from anyone with streaming cough, colds or infectious diseases and also be vigilant with hand washing. You will also be given advice on certain foods to avoid during this time. The most important thing to remember is to ring with or without a temperature, if at all worried or showing signs of infection. Please be aware that the symptoms of COVID are similar to that of neutropenic sepsis. Please call the emergency number for further advice. I had a neutropenic sepsis a week after one of my chemotherapies. I had experienced a cold, hadn't felt great, but thought I was on the mend. Late afternoon, I began to feel an ache in my legs. And by early evening, I was needing to walk around as I couldn't sit comfortably. I was monitoring my temperature with an ear thermometer. At 8 p.m., it peaked at over 38 Celsius. And I rang the 24-hour emergency hotline number I had been given and was advised to come in immediately. By then, my legs were uncontrollably shaking. Because I had rung the hotline, I was able to be seen quickly in ED and then spent four days in hospital. There was nothing more I could have done in self-care to prevent it. Being aware, investing in a good quality thermometer, listening to my body and keeping my 24-hour emergency hotline number handy really helped me. Chemotherapy can make you feel sick and nauseous. If you have suffered with morning sickness, travel sickness or sickness after an anaesthetic, please let the staff know as you may be more likely to experience post-chemotherapy nausea and sickness. You will be given anti-sickness medication to take before the chemotherapy and will be given anti-sickness tablets to take home. If you find these do not work for you, please ring straight away as the nurses can get a different type of anti-sickness medication prescribed for you. Some hints to help if feeling sick are eating a little and often, try taking ginger or arrowroot, dry foods such as crackers or toast may help, eating cold foods if the smell of cooking triggers nausea, or wearing sea bands which help with travel sickness. I found peeled raw carrots really helped me. My saviour when nothing else tempted me. You will find yours too. When you're eating, try and eat foods which are full of calories and it is better to eat as often as you can when you feel able. Don't worry about set meal times. Your body needs the calories to repair the damage to your healthy cells. The staff will be weighing you frequently, so we'll be keeping an eye out for any weight loss or weight gain. If you are not eating or drinking, please give the staff a ring as you may get dehydrated.
Whilst having chemotherapy, be gentle with your mouth. Use a soft toothbrush and do not brush your teeth too vigorously. You will be given a mouthwash to take home and use this regularly. If you develop mouth ulcers, you can use over-the-counter products. If the mouth becomes too sore to eat and drink, please ring us. Sometimes your taste changes and this may differ every day. Fresh pineapple can help stimulate your production of saliva and keep your mouth fresh. Try using herbs and spices to flavour your food. So this is, this is some photos of uh, when I had cancer. Okay. Not all chemotherapy will cause hair loss. Although we know this is the side effect most people think about and understandably can be concerned about when they hear about chemotherapy. Since graduation, and there I am wearing a wig. If your chemotherapy causes hair loss, you will be told before you start your treatment, and this usually starts to happen about two to three weeks after your first cycle. And that was me once it had grown. The thought of losing my hair was upsetting at first but not nearly as bad as I had imagined. It was quite empowering really, as I took the decision to shave it once hair loss had become obvious. I had a wig, but normally wore a selection of hats and bright, zazzy, colorful scarves that made me feel really good. My hair grew back like a baby chick's feathers, all soft and fluffy, but after a period of time, new growth brought real vitality and gloss. The Macmillan Information Service offers a wig ordering service and also has a supply of headwear you can purchase for a donation. If you would like to get a wig using an NHS prescription, please ask. You will have a leaflet in your information pack. We would recommend that you are gentle with your hair before and during treatment. Use a mild shampoo and the coolest setting on the hair dryer and avoid using straighteners. We would also recommend that you do not color or perm your hair whilst on chemotherapy. Fatigue is a very severe form of tiredness that can be one of the most common problems for patients with cancer. This can be very frustrating, disheartening and difficult to deal with. Speak honestly with your nurse or doctor about your fatigue without playing it down, as there may be a cause such as anemia which can be treated. Macmillan have a very useful book Coping with Fatigue, which will give you ways to manage the fatigue, such as pacing yourself and also by doing a little bit of gentle exercise. It is also a good time to allow family and friends to help out with shopping and other chores. Friends and family want to help. They will be struggling with your diagnosis too. By letting them help you, you are helping them as well explaining to them that there will be times that you will want to just be left alone and won't be taking phone calls after an agreed time in the evening is something I also did. Really try not to beat yourself up over what you may not be able to do right now. It does get better. If you start suffering from diarrhoea after chemotherapy, it is important to keep drinking fluids, especially water, to keep you well hydrated. If you have more than four episodes of diarrhoea in a day, we want you to ring the helpline number as it may be a sign of infection. It may be helpful to eat food which contains less fibre. Some of the anti-sickness drugs you may be given can cause constipation. Increase the amount of fruit and vegetables into your diet and again, drink plenty of water. Gentle exercise can often help. If you realize that you have not been to the toilet for a few days and this is unusual for you, please ring the helpline. There are going to be times that you can't sleep or that you wake in the middle of the night with thoughts whirring around in your head. Try and have a calming routine for going to sleep, but should sleep become a problem, please mention to one of the staff. 
I kept a notepad by my bed, and if I woke up during the night thinking about things I needed to do the next day, I would write them down. I could then go back to sleep, not fretting that I would forget. I would get up and write update emails to family and friends. I found it incredibly therapeutic in the calm, dark of night. A diagnosis of cancer is really tough and often the first sign of feeling ill is actually the chemotherapy treatment itself. All feelings are okay. It is absolutely normal to ask, why me? To feel angry, sad and every other emotion you can think of. The most important thing is to express these feelings and to let staff know if these feelings are becoming overwhelming and difficult to deal with. Getting out in the fresh air as much as possible, in the garden, walking, and as I'm a runner, running when I felt able really helped me. Showers and runs were my time for tears. Having things to look forward to was important too. Recognising that yes, I would have bad days, but yes, I would have many good days too. Taking my dogs, Millie and Kerry, out for walks gave my life normality when everything else felt far from normal. Just doing things that I enjoyed when I was able to, that made me smile and feel happy, really helped me. If you ever need to ring the emergency 24-hour hotline during office hours, you will speak to one of the Acute Oncology Service team, otherwise known as the AOS team. This is a team of specially trained nurses who look after patients with complications from their treatment or side effects they are finding difficult to manage. If you are advised to attend A&E during office hours, they will endeavour to see you there and assist with any treatment you require. If you are admitted to hospital, the AOS team will also see you on the ward. Thank you very much for watching our film. We very much hope it has helped you in some way. We wish you all the very, very best. Thank you.